the next few lectures we will focus on the applications of constraint based modeling. So, in this in today's lecture I will show you how we went about identifying drug targets for tuberculosis by performing a flux balance analysis of the uh, mycolic acid pathway in mycobacterium tuberculosis. Welcome back, let us study some applications of constraint based analysis today. So, there are many, many applications of constraint based analysis, but the most popular ones the practical applications lie in the area of uh, metabolic engineering and drug target identification and we look at both examples today some of them from my own work and some of them from other interesting studies that have been published. So, what can genome scale metabolic networks tell us? This is a nice picture which tells you the distribution of studies that are based only on the E. coli reconstruction. There is a popular reconstruction for E. coli known as the IAF 1260. It accounts for 1260 ORFs open reading frames in E. coli. It was published uh, in I think uh, 2012 or so. so there are about 248 um, um, studies that use the E. coli reconstruction probably earlier than 2012. So, there are about 248 studies that use the E. coli reconstruction and if you see about um, 29 percent of them study biological network properties what reactions are coupled, what reactions are uh, you know interacting with one another and so on and then about uh, one quarter of the studies focus on predicting cellular phenotypes. And there is another bunch of studies that uh, do model driven discovery of you know what are the you know what is the function of a particular gene or things like that and metabolic engineering studies again very popular and so on right. So, a lot of studies work on metabolic engineering and on analysis of biological network properties and you know maybe some phenotypic analysis trying to uh, you know delete prediction of cellular phenotypes right and you predict cellular phenotypes again for metabolic engineering or for drug target identification. So, two classic applications. So, let us see a few examples. So, let us see how we identify drug targets for tuberculosis. So, how do you start how would you start any of these modeling exercises? You need to essentially figure out what is the goal of the modeling right. So, if I am trying to target tuberculosis the obvious idea would be to try and um, uh, basically <coughs> knock out the TB metabolism right or you know identify proteins that when inhibited or uh, you know the, those are drug targets which when knocked off will stop TB from growing or you know will actually kill it right. So, how do you identify such targets that becomes the first challenge and I will show you two approaches a simple approach that is just based on a single metabolic pathway and a more comprehensive approach that takes into account as much as possible uh, information from the whole genome. So, the mycobacterial cell wall is very distinctive and it is associated with pathogenicity and it contains arabinogalactan mycolate which is covalently linked with, linked with peptidoglycan which is a more common uh, cell wall component and trehalose dimycolate which provides a thick layer. So, this thick layer helps it evade classic antibiotics and also the host immune system. So, you cannot take like a regular penicillin or uh, you know any of those drugs to combat TB right. and myco mycolic acids are critical components of the cell wall they are basically long chain, long chain alpha alkyl beta hydroxy fatty acids. So, there are two interesting fatty acid cycles I will show them in a moment and it is also the known target for drugs like isoniazid acid and ethionamide these are two pro, uh, very popular drugs anti TB drugs. So, this is how the pathway looks like. So, if you just zoom in a little. So, there are about there are four different uh, uh, you know sections here. So, the first is basically production of some precursor molecules then is what is known as the fast 1 cycle and then what is known as the fast 2 cycle followed by you know the production of some the final production of mycolase there are 5 different types of mycolase we will get to that in a moment. So, there are 4 main sections. So, so this just involves melanyl coa production and this is a cyclic set of reactions. So, you see that there are about 21 reactions here from reaction number 2 to 22 which are catalyzed by the fatty acid synthase 1 enzyme it is a very interesting enzyme it has about uh, 3000 amino acids and 5 different subunits that basically do 5 interesting catalytic activities. Here you have the fast 2 cycle where you have 5 different enzymes which does the same job right and fast 1 operates till a length of C24 and fast 2 starts at around 24 and goes all the way up till uh, you know 70, 80 or so right. So, till about uh, yeah. 50 or 60 
right. So, there are such large uh, chains of fatty acids that are formed and then finally, there are some desaturations, uh, there are some desaturases that act and uh, create some double bonds and things like that. So, you have something known as alpha mycolate, cis uh, methoxy mycolate, cis keto mycolate and trans methoxy mycolate and trans keto mycolate. So, there are 5 different mycolic acids that are present in the uh, in, in mycobacterium tuberculosis. So, and if you see there is uh, a reaction here which involves the protein INHA which is the target for known drugs such as isoniazid and ethionamide. So, this pathway is already the target for known TB drugs. So, what we did was the first obvious task is to go and reconstruct the pathway which means you know go through a lot of literature and uh, databases and figure out what are all the reactions. We identified about 219 reactions in just this pathway alone with about 28 proteins, 28 enzymes, 197 metabolites and 28 exchange fluxes. So, what is the size of the stoichiometric matrix? Right, It is going to be 197 cross 219, but you have to add the internal the exchange fluxes as well which will make it 247. So, 197 cross 219 plus 28 which is 247. And the model was primarily constructed from cake biopsych and literature, simulated using FBA and MoMA. What is the objective function for a small model such as this? It is a little trickier, right? For a normal cell, you would say biomass, right? Whereas, if I am just modeling a pathway, how would I come up with an objective function, right? So, you need to figure out what is the goal of this pathway or you know what are the what is the constraint on this pathway essentially. So, we hypothesize that we would try to produce the most important mycolates right. So, there are 5 mycolates. So, there is alpha mycolate, cis methoxy, cis keto, trans methoxy, and trans keto. So, one way to do this would be you could combine all this in some A is to B to T to C D E ratio and produce something known as mycolate biomass right and then you maximize this. The problem with this is it obviously requires all 5 to be present in a particular proportion where it is known that the cell does not produce all 5 simultaneously. I mean it can produce, but there are cases when if it cannot produce this, it will produce more of this. So, then you cannot use this approach. So, <coughs> this is like a classic biomass right. So, you say A A plus B B plus C C okay. gives some X biomass. If I were to maximize this, if even one of these is not there, this reaction goes off and my objective function will drop to 0. But it is known that mycobacterium can grow in the absence of alpha mycolate, although a little slowly, right. So, then this does not become a valid objective function. So, we said the, my, the objective function should actually just be this. It is some sort of prioritizing the mycolates in the order in which they are, they are important, right. Alpha is the most important, which means that A is much greater than B and so on. But then you know B, C, D are all like you know relatively similar orders of magnitude and so on. So, we set up an objective function of that sort and went ahead and did an FBA with multiple conditions. So, first is wild type, so normal mycobacterium tuberculosis and then we looked at deleting multiple genes or inhibiting a particular gene and so on. So, let us look at this first. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this is a hypothetical reaction, right? So, we discussed this before as well. This is important, right? If you have a reaction of this sort, if no B is produced, no X is produced. Because this is like a hypothetical reaction now. This is, this is even though fictitious, it is a reaction in the model right now. So, if you rem remember, we had some, you know, some X moles of glucose plus Y moles of alanine plus Z moles of ATP gives some K moles of biomass, right? So, if any of these is not present in the particular proportion or it is not present at all, if something is not present in the particular proportion, it is ok. So, it will be limited by the you know the one that is at the lowest rate, but if there is no B at all, this reaction cannot even happen, right. So, if you want if you know that 
this reaction can happen or you know the cell can survive or it can produce biomass in the absence of these then you have to use a different objective function right. So finally you are trying to make an objective function that will try to best capture you know the lethals and so on. Now if I do a single gene deletion and so on how does it agree with what is reported in literature that will become my target. So let us see how that happened. <coughs> So this is without gene deletions. So we are just plotting the flux distribution here. So and on a relative scale, right? So minus one to plus one. You can think of this as minus thousand to plus thousand, whatever uh, you know bounds that you give. And you see that some flux is very high, nearly one. And another flux, I think this is for Astel and Malone and Coe. And then the cycle, all the reactions actually have a very similar uh, flux, right? And Finally, this part is where you have the mycolates, right. So you have alpha mycolate is reaction number 197 which has some flux of you know 0 0.029 or something like that and these are the other mycolates, right. So you have all the mycolates being listed here and you see here that there is a redistribution. When I delete PCAA which is uh, an important gene for mycolate, uh, alpha mycolate production you see that there is a redistribution of the fluxes here and when I delete INHA it all goes to 0 basically there are only some exchange fluxes which are not even relevant and here in, under the inhibition of mycolate uh, INHA you again see that most fluxes drop to 0 it, you look at the scale it is all very low so the scale is very different from what you have in the previous plot so so and how do you simulate inhibition we basically fix the, L, the UB to 10 percent of the value if you have 90 percent inhibition you fix all uh, the you fix the UB of this reaction to 90 per, to 10 percent of its wild type value. So that is how we studied inhibition. So as I said we used an objective function prioritizing the mycolic acids based on the cell wall composition of mycolic acids and we identified 16 genes as essential which had good agreement with experimentally available um, gene essentiality data. So they are experimentally determined data using a technique called trans, transposon site hybridization mutagenesis. So what it does is it knocks out every single gene in, equal in uh, mycobacterium and reports the phenotype and essentially we had 19 agreements with this data about 5 disagreements and for 4 the uh, results were not available and uh, it turns out though that uh, in uh, the Sassetti paper uh, INHA itself is not reported as an essential gene even though it is a very well known drug target and uh, so we but once you have a short list of targets there are other uh, factors that to consider right. So what would be a good drug target? It should not have any similarity with human proteins right because you do not want a drug that you are targeting against tuberculosis to go and uh, you know damage any human or like bind to any human protein it could cause an unwanted uh, side effect what we call as adverse drug reactions. So to eliminate these we just did a simple sequence analysis. So, we looked for human proteins that had a homology of more than 30 40 percent with tuberculosis and eliminated those right. So that helps you to make sure make sure that these targets are going to be less likely to bind to human proteins. You can do better than this as I will discuss a little later. So, so this is just a very simplistic approach just doing sequence analysis but you could do structure or there are other things you can do. We will just uh, come, come back to it with the next to next example. Today's video I introduced you to the different applications of flux balance analysis and constraint based modeling and I hope the example we gave was quite motivating which was one of drug target identification in tuber for tuberculosis wherein we looked at the all important mycolic acid pathway in mycobacterium tuberculosis to identify critical reactions or enzymes which could potentially be targeted. In the next video we will switch gears and look at another kind of application which is essentially metabolic engineering and we will look at how a very interesting uh, approach was used to identify targets for improving lycopene biosynthesis in E. coli. Mm -hmm.